All right, folks, it's Jason here coming from Kannapolis, North Carolina at Guitars and Cars. And we are doing our very first, hopefully of many, how-to video in conjunction with Stock Car Steel. So what we're gonna do today is a MIG welding project. It's really simple. With basic tools, you can do this on your own. And if you know where to get the stuff, which we do, it makes it really easy. It all starts with these two pieces of steel. We're gonna make something, we're just gonna weld something together to where this piece of steel goes into a trailer hitch receiver, and we're gonna make a T, it's gonna be slightly off center, so that one of our buddies, Jack, can put a, a tire around this and make it a tow bar to push cars around his little boneyard. So it's gonna be really simple, really cool, and I'm gonna start by telling you what you need. Okay, we're gonna start with a couple pieces of steel. Normally, if you go to your, your local hardware store, the steel is gonna be quite expensive, uh, especially as prices are going up and going up. But at Stock Car Steel in Mooresville, North Carolina, we get these things from their drop area, okay? So this is what will go into our trailer hitch receiver, and this is what it will weld to, to actually hold the tire. And I've got a couple other pieces like this. And the nice thing about the drop area, I, I use that actually to make this table even. Um, what it is is a section for cutoffs from big orders and you know you can buy smaller pieces and not commit to a large amount of money and it's really convenient sometimes I go in there and just say hey I'm gonna practice my TIG welding on aluminum can you point me in the right direction in the drops area and there's somebody that I can will call that's usually really helpful and they say okay here's your expensive aluminum and here's your aluminum that's not so expensive that's really good for practicing here's how much it is price per foot or price per pound so we use this even for our car builds we Sometimes we just need a piece that's two feet long. We don't need to buy 10 feet of it. Stock car steel is the best. Uh, we got some real good friends that we've, we've made through the years using them. We build little fixtures, little tables and stuff like that. So if you're a hobbyist, don't be intimidated by the fact that you've got to buy $300 worth of steel to do something like this, because you don't. Just check out stock car steel. As for our welder, we're gonna use this Miller Multimatic machine. Now, Stock Car Steel's sister company, SRI Performance, which is also in Morrisville, well, different area, different store, they sell a lot of these units from NASCAR teams, buy -buy, buybacks, old uh, race shops that have uh, you know upgraded or something like that. That's a really good place to get one of these, or you can just buy it from Miller. But uh, we're gonna start with this. Now, this is an expensive machine. It has an auto set. We can just punch in what thickness metal we're gonna use. Um, we've got an argon tank with 7525. And if you have a MIG welder, don't be intimidated. You don't have to have the super expensive one, although it does make it nice to have the auto set on that. And you can get those at SRI Performance if you're interested in it. Uh, and we've just got our basic uh, auto darkening welding helmet, which you can get uh, at a lot of welding supply stores. So this is pretty simple. We'll get started here. The most important thing before you start welding anything is to clean off your material. We're not gonna TIG weld this, so we don't have to go to super crazy extents. Whenever we TIG weld, I mean, we're cleaning the surface with uh, acetone or some sort of solvent. Um, but right now what I'm gonna use is, I'm gonna use an angle grinder with what we call a flap wheel. I believe these are 80 grit, that's what I really like. And that's gonna get any paint or any scale off of the edges. Really, you just need to make sure that you don't have anything that contaminate your weld whenever you put these two pieces together and start burning them because we wanna keep our weld to be melted metal or melted wire going in there and not necessarily a fire. If you've got paint and all these things on the, on the surface, it turns into a fire. So uh, I think it goes without saying, I'm not a safety expert, but I do this all the time and my safety is very important. So take a minute, I've got my earmuffs. Uh, these are a 33 decibel reduction. That's very important to me in my ears. I've got safety glasses. These aren't just plastic glasses. These are rated for impact. I've got my welding gloves on. So even though I'm not a certified safety instructor, I would urge you look online, look up OSHA, something, wherever you need to make sure you're working safe. Because if you do this and you hurt yourself, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be doing fabrication very long. So it's really important to stay safe and uh, make sure you do your due diligence on that part as well. So let's get started.
So Jason, why do you sand those in different areas? Well, here's a good a good uh, viewpoint here. And sometimes I even go inside and clean it up too. We just want to get the scale off of this. Um, when it starts looking shiny and nice, and sometimes I bevel the edges of this just to give a little bit of, uh, more of a surface area for the weld to lay into. Um, and then this is where we're welding to. So both of them are nice and shiny. So now we can set up and start working. Now that we got our surfaces all nice and clean, we're ready to weld. We're halfway there, it's about 15 minutes or something like that. So look, this isn't as hard as it may seem, unless it's as hard as it seems. Getting ready to MIG weld, so we've got our torch and we've got our ground clamp. Those are the two main components you need for a MIG welder. What's gonna happen is we're gonna press this button and it's gonna feed the wire and whenever it completes the ground circuit, it's gonna melt into the joint. It's gonna be 15 or 1700 degrees, I think. Now, a couple really good tricks for, or tips, I guess, for the hobbyist. Number one, get your ground as close as you can to where you're welding. Sometimes I'll even put it right here maybe, if it'll balance, because remember, you're completing a ground. So the closer your ground is whenever you're welding, the better your weld is gonna flow in probably. The easier it's gonna get ignited and start, start working. Um, the other thing is, if you can see really closely here, um, this is, my feed wire on my torch, I'll feed it out a little bit, after I've welded something else. You can see this burnt back area right there, okay? That's already been heated up. We'll take a close picture of it and insert it. That's already been heated up. So what I wanna do is I wanna take my wire snippers and I wanna cut that off so that I don't have to remelt that to start burning into the new material. So almost every time I start welding another line, I snip off the old wire. Just snip off the end there where you can see it burn back. Some welders have a burn back setting and these other things. That's really complicated. You don't need to know. But if, even if you're using a $300 wire welder, if you put your ground closer and snip this back before you start welding, I guarantee you, you're going to feel better about your welds. You're going to happen quicker and more efficient. So get rid of that. Okay, we've got our surface clean, our ground connected. One last thing before we start welding. Our argon is preset because we use this MIG welder a lot. Um, it's gonna run at about 20, I think. Uh, I think that's inch pounds out of our regulator. But uh, you wanna make sure that you've got enough argon because that's what's pulling the oxygen away and keeping it from becoming a fire. And you wanna make sure that your tip is free of any, any kind of dirt or anything that could uh, keep the argon from flowing out or maybe even cause problems there. So we've already checked this. Our tip is nice and clean. That's another thing that people forget to do is make sure you've got argon flow. You even want to hear it whenever you pull the trigger real quick. You want to hear that and then check your regulator. Uh, make sure that it's the proper flow. I think 18 to 25 is pretty much inch pounds where everybody kind of lands on, uh, on MIG welding. Um, I find sometimes if I'm working on dirtier metal, I'll, I'll, I'll lean towards 20 or 22 or something. 18 or 19 on this machine works pretty good. Your manufacturer should have specifications or a helpline where you can look at that. But uh, again, I'm using a 75, 25, that's 25% carbon dioxide on our, uh, on our gas. But uh, yeah, we're ready to go. So let's tack this thing together. I'll set it up, get it where I like it. I'm gonna put this one little spacer underneath here so that I'm even. 90 degrees is not really the biggest concern here. Um, or else I would have it clamped into a fixture for 90 degrees. What I'm gonna do first though, is I'm gonna tack weld on the corners and then I'll run a line and we'll talk about one more thing and this will be done and Jack will be happy. Okay, I'm going to tack the corners and the reason I'm gonna tack the corners is if I take a look at this once it's tacked together and I don't like it, that's kind of my easiest area to get in here with a grinder and cut the tacks loose and then redo them. So, we're gonna focus our heat on the thicker piece of metal, which is right here. And then I'm just gonna kind of let it flow downhill. Remember, the wire's feeding and gravity's just gonna take it downhill. All right, so let's get started. Don't forget to snip your wire and repeat, do the same thing. I forgot to mention, I keep a wire brush around. That way after I do the tack, any kind of, any kind of uh, dirt or anything that seems to be attracted into the heat puddle, I can knock it away. 
Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just run across here and we're gonna fill up the V. It's a great, great way to practice right now in something like this. Remember, get comfortable where you can see and just plan your, plan your line before you do it. I always like to maybe put some fingers down here or something and that way I, I know which way I'm gonna go. In this instance, I'm gonna pull and let's give it a go. I'm gonna go ahead and wire brush again, because you can never have it too clean. And I'll show you another little trick too. I'm gonna actually put this other piece of metal here just for my hand to sit on. I do this a lot when I'm working on a bench. Um, you know, you can actually have something for a prop, and that way you're not out here freestyling it, because I've kind of got shaky hands for, for a guy who does this a lot, I've got shaky hands, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this here because now the tube's gonna be hot and I don't wanna get my hand hot and I'm just gonna guide like that. Now on this joint here, we've got a little bit of a gap so I'm gonna play around with that a little bit. I'm not gonna to try to weld the air in there. I don't know if you can see that, I don't have a pointer. I'm gonna to try to sort of work on this thick side and wick it across. And if you notice, I do a little bit of a, a lowercase e whenever I'm doing this. You don't have to do that, but I just like doing it. Bird's eye view of that. Looks like I got a little gap over here where my where my tack was, and I think I'll just I'll go ahead and pop a little in there just because I like the way it looks. And now I think what I'll do uh, just for just for a little bit of uh, fun is I'll push this one. Same sort of thing, I'm gonna kinda of bounce between this gap. I'm not gonna aim directly at this air. The air inside of it's hot. If we were really trying to do some super nice job, we would actually purge the inside of this with argon, okay? If we were worried about the inside, but I, what I do need to realize is that the air's hot and it might push back on me just a hair before it ventilates, so we'll just be careful. Well, there you go. We melted two pieces of metal together. And soon you're gonna see the second part of this video and Jack's gonna show you how he does this. But yeah, we're happy. And this is not something you could go buy. So with a little bit of work in the welder and knowing where to go, again, don't forget, stock car steel. You can get pieces as small as this. It's not super expensive. You can just practice your welding. In actuality, if you're gonna do a bunch of these, you know, you would wanna practice on that thickness material, really dial in your welder, make sure that you, you like it. This was our first time through, and it's, it's not gonna not going to be a super critical component, but it is gonna be important, we want it to last. So um, don't forget, stock car steel drops. If you need a welder, check out SRI Performance, the sister company. And uh, in the meantime, keep your welds clean and uh, your hands steady, and we'll see you next time.